Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good whatever. Oh, good Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Namaste. Namaste. Hello. Hello. How are you? How is everything? <laughs> Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's it's good. In a week, um, I go on vacation for two weeks. Oh wow! Uh, mount, mountain scaling in Austria, and oh, uh, nice. yeah. yes, yes, yes. But otherwise, it's okay. Summer has a uh, has bid farewell a little bit. Uh, it's been pretty cool and rainy, but which is good on the other on the other uh, hand because so it's good for nature. So that's nice. And what about monsoon? Mon monsoon is a... Yeah, it's a peak monsoon now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's raining every day. Yeah. Probably like worst part of the year in terms of season. Difficult to travel. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah. But traveling is bad. Dardin, namaste. Namaste. Namaste, Dardin. Yeah. Namaste. Hello, we were discussing about monsoon time in Nepal. A lot of rain, landslides. Everything. <laughs> so um, I, I today I talked with uh, Swetcher. She was in Dolaka. Yeah. She had posting there, and she returned. I think today or yesterday. So it's uh, it's, it's amazing it's that she could come back. That she could come back home. But I think this the road has improved much, yeah. right? Road to Dolaka yeah. is good, but inside yeah. Dolaka uh, there was a, like a small landslide in Dolaka. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, but she said that uh, otherwise the hospital, which um, at the times we visited, it was actually pretty empty, is uh, is pretty crowded now. So people now are coming. Yeah. yeah. That's good. All, yeah. Although not into the government insurance system, there are certain programs uh, which uh, people can claim there. So that has uh, increased the patient number in Dolakha. Oh, so what do you mean they can claim insurance? It's it's not the governmental insurance; it's a different yeah, insurance. You, you know about the government insurance, like all yeah, the yeah, patients. Yeah, yeah. Are, like yeah. in Dolaka, there are three three hospitals, and yeah. of of the three, one is the proper government hospital where all the insured cases uh, uh, they claim uh, they they do treatment in that hospital. So that's Dolaka, where we went, right? We were yeah. there. Oh, no, were you with us? Yes. No, you went. Oh, but yeah, I also was there, and yeah. uh, so as Dolha Hospital was not into the insurance thing, the patient number was not much. But oh. now we are given some certain disease; those are included in Dolha. Like, oh, okay, good, Something well, like good, that. yeah, it's a good place. The yeah. I've been there like five or six times. Yeah, good. Very very That's nice. Good. Yeah. So yeah, next uh, time we go. Oh, yeah. Next time I'm in Nepal, I, I want to go there again. It's uh, it's good. I like yeah. it there. So maybe so we can. Weeks back. So actually, we had, I... Yeah. Yeah. See. So we had the head of department meeting with the hospital administration team in Dolaka. Oh, in Go Gorka or Dolaka? Oh, Dolaka, Dolaka, Dolaka. Hmm. Okay. Oh, you had a team meeting there. So everyone uh, had to go there for the meeting? Yeah, 40 people went there. Oh, wow. Wow. So is it is it actually still called an outreach or is it more oh, like a... It's, we call it Dolaka Hospital Dulikel, something like Dulikel Hospital, something like that. Yeah, yeah, affiliated. Uh, yeah, managed by yeah. Dulikel Hospital, something like that. Yeah. So, so it's more like, like a... Like a like a branch, uh, yeah, yeah. Because um, and Dean, and I were talking. That, well, uh, and we said that maybe we should really include Dolaka uh, into the like uh, the the programs in terms of um, having sessions there, uh, including nurses and doctors there, like a little bit like in Dulica, you know. That yeah. was the idea. So the research work uh, we did in Dolaka, it was quite interesting, and so we 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 need to include in the further research also in future. Yeah, yeah, and and more on the clinical side also. Not on, uh, research is good, but it has to has to fit into the clinical. Um, yeah. Well, how do you say clinical knowledge of what? Oh, no, it's uh, you can't see me now. It's sun. What is that? 
I have to turn around here. Uh, Ah, okay. Ah, so this. Oh, he's oh, <laughs> gone there. Yeah. He might be. He might be on car or traveling. Let's see. So, uh, we have a new member. Um, where is Doctor Manos and Manis? Doctor Manos. Yeah, Manos, Manos is a new medical officer in Department of Surgery, and. Uh, uh, but and uh, Dr. Manis was also in last meeting. So both of them are pretty new medical officers in our team. So I'd okay. like to welcome Dr. Manos and Dr. Manis. So in October, when Dr. Dean and team visits, uh, they will be they both of them will be with us, including with uh, Dr. Sanjay. Okay. So is Sanjay joining us today too, or is he? He will join. Uh, one of the out of three, one one might be busy in. In the hospital, we had one thoracic thoracotomy case. So, but he will join. Okay, good. So, uh, Dr. Dean and Dr. Florian, today uh, uh, we are planning to present. Uh, we'll be presenting one case of abdominal aortic aneurysm that we had already we discussed uh, three weeks back, which was operated in Kathmandu two days back. Okay, okay. So we'll discuss quickly, and uh, uh, Dr. Nobin and myself, we will be quickly seeing few slides about. Update on the research. Okay, yeah. good. Sounds good. So, and Sonia and uh, Swetcha, uh, she might join, but uh, Sonia uh, seems to be a little bit busy. She has texted me. So, so shall we start? Yeah, sure. So, so Son Sonia is leaving. So she has a. Uh, uh, she already has a date when she's leaving. Or? No, no, no. She's already in the US. So, so she's oh, ready she's to oh. Dr. Dean, I think. <laughs> oh, she's close to D. Ah, that's why he's smiling. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Okay, well then, yeah. So how's everything in the US? <laughs> it's okay. Well, everything's good, except the women lost in World yeah, Cup. And the with German Sweden. women, yeah. With Sweden, Sweden team, yeah. Yeah, to Sweden. And uh, Sonia, yeah, she's close. She's only like 1,500 kilometers away, but she's <laughs> closer than she used to be. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, don't worry, Dr. Okay, so, yeah. so everything's good, yep. yep. All right, so should we start? Who's, who's yes. presenting? So I, I'll you? present a case of okay. aortic aneurysm. Second. Second. So can you see my screen? So is my screen case uh, shared? Your e your yes. email is in the way. Okay. There you go. So this is uh, the 18th Global Vascular Conference, and once again, warm welcome to all all our great um, mentors and team members uh, in the 18th edition of this. Global Vascular Meeting. Uh, we are very ex excited to welcome team in, in August 2nd. And, and thank you, Dr. Dean and team once again for scheduling the, um, uh, the, the trek in the Dasain Festival and the working time just prior to Dasain. So I'll, uh, I'll be presenting on the case, which was uh, also discussed a few weeks back. So he is uh, 64 years male from Dulikil. He actually worked in Dulkhel Law's resort, and um, he complained. He presented with abdominal mass, which he noticed uh, only two months back, which was uh, gradually progressive. It was painless mass, and uh, besides this, uh, he doesn't uh, complain. He doesn't have other complaint, but um, he is a hypertensive under medication since ten years. He was ex-smoker, but not diabetic. And he doesn't have any features of uh, lower limb pain or other features of claudication. And um, he has history of uh, coronary artery bypass graft done four years back in Kathmandu. So when we examined him in OPD, he, uh, his general condition uh, was fair and vitals were stable. And uh, in abdomen examination, we could uh, palpate a pulsatile mass, which is uh, non-tender. Uh, extending from epigastrium to hypogastrium with the size of uh, about uh, 
16 by 8 centimeter. So we did ultrasound ultrasonography in our OPD and uh, we could find use um, abdominal aortic aneurysm with a diameter, uh, largest diameter of 5.5 centimeter and length of about 15 centimeter. Uh, and in terms of uh, location, uh, we thought uh, it started from the level of renal arteries extending to um, both the iliac arteries. So this was, these are some of the pictures uh, we took in our ultrasound, ultrasound machine in, when we did in OPD. And, uh, and he also has under ultrasonography by radiologist and the findings were pretty similar. Then we, uh, then we did a CCT ab abdomen in which uh, we could find uh, the same finding and uh, the abdominal aortic aneurysm started just uh, just at the level of uh, renal arteries and um, with a maximum diameter of uh, 54 millimeter and a length of about uh, 16 centimeter. So as discussed, uh, we took about one week time to discuss with all the team members. And we also discussed this case with uh, Dr. Uttam and team. And, we, and uh, he suggested on uh, both the options, but uh, but uh, surgical repair seemed to be more appropriate in this case. And then we also discussed about whether this case can be done in the Lucille hospital or not. And, but he suggested uh, let's, uh, to do this case in Kathmandu. And only two days back, uh, this case was uh, done in, operated in, in uh, center in Kathmandu. Because we, were, we had some really difficult cases in Tulikil, we could not join directly during the surgery, but uh, we, we had shared but Dr. Uttam shared some of the pictures. And these two pictures were what we received from Dr. Uttam. And uh, he said uh, the findings were all, almost similar to what uh, we, we could see in CT and uh, ultrasonography. And, uh, and they decided, uh, they think that the renal arteries, the aneurysm started just below the renal arteries. That's why the graft was placed just distal to the renal artery, up to the both uh, ILAC artery. And although the, in the picture it's shown as the right eyelid, they actually joined with the uh, left internal eyelid also in the left side. So these two pictures we received from Dr. Uttam and we had some uh, discussion about this case immediately after surgery also. And although the patient is still admitted in Kathmandu, uh, he is recovering well uh, till today. So thank you. So I'd like to open the floor for further discussion. Uh, Robin, can you show the initial picture regarding the internal iliac? That was why was that replaced? Was there an aneurysm too? Uh, actually, the, the aneurysm extended to uh, bilateral uh, common iliac arteries, more on, with a larger diameter on the right iliac. That's on the right. So now when we see that the, the intraoperative picture, so, so uh, there's the there's the second this graph goes down to the to the internal. So, uh, so on one side the anastomos to probably to the external as well as internal. Okay, so there's an extra graph to the to the internal. And on another side. I think Dr. Uh, Anastomos to the external idea. To the external, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, it looks, looks, looks perfect. Uh, what I usually do is, um, if necessary, I um, go down to the, do an end to end onto the internal uh, um, iliac artery and then um, put another graph coming from that graph down to the external. If it's necessary, so but he he did it the other way around, which is I think a little, little bit more complicated. But I mean, it looks looks very good, looks really good. So can can you share like uh, how how do you commonly approach this case? Like where do we do the distal anastomosis? Well, it depends on where the aneurysm ends. Um, it depends if the if the bifurcation is not involved, then you can put a tube. Like uh, it's it's uh, from from the proximal anastomosis down to the 
to the bifurcation. If it involves the iliacs, then you go down to the well, wherever it uh, starts being normal again. I mean, usually it is at the junction then, the iliac uh, uh, fork. Um, we actually did a case last, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it, it would have fit, but um, I don't have a picture. Maybe I can uh, try to just uh, uh, take a quick photo from, from, this, from the other computer. We had a case where there was an aneurysm of the of the aorta plus this guy actually complained of the PAD because he had uh, the the common iliacs were or the, the externals were um, heavily stenosed on both sides. So we did an aorto uh, bifemoral bypass and just ligated the or uh, closed the the iliacs just bypassing them in a way. So, so another thing is aspect, yeah. a technical aspect or trick is just like what Florian said, <clears throat> for however the reason is, is when you go with a bifurcated graph, it's usually easier to tie into the internal iliac first, as opposed to what was done here, uh, connecting into the external iliac. It, it's just then easy to do the jump graft off that limb to the external where it's a little harder technically to come off that limb to go on into the internal uh, iliac. It, it just, oh, the exposure and, and so on. It's just a little easier doing the internal first. So, uh, one thing that Dr. Satis and myself, we are reminding Suppose uh, this aneurysm started just uh, at the level of renal artery or slightly above, then then the procedure might be uh, very different. Or well, well, it depends. Actually, this guy we did we did also had a, a juxta renal um, aneurysm, and what I mean, what you want to try is to to stay well on the level of the renals. So in that case, you have to cross clamp them. And um, do the anastomos well? Actually, exactly at that at the level where the renals will start, and um, but that includes, as I said, the cross clamping, which means that of course the renals can be or the, the renal function can be hampered uh, according to yeah. how long the the anastomosis needs. Um, but uh, um, very often one is is a little bit higher than the uh, than the than the other. Like in this case, the the right one is a little bit uh, more proximal than the left one so in that case you could do a like a, a cross cross clamping of the aorta in a in an oblique way so that you leave the right one out and um and then it just just cross clamp the left one so, so, I like, so, so can i choose the classification uh, which we can discuss so when when um when you, um you showed us the CT scan yeah it's like this um the yuxarenal. that's I mean this is actually what I thought this case also was like right yeah, yeah. wasn't almost fair yeah, like juxtarenal. yeah so supposedly in case of suprarenal and pararenal then the strategies might change. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, especially if it's super renal. It's um, well, this is this is the the well pass four. It's like below the renals is the section five, and this is the section four, and this includes um, like well, you have to go above the renals, and then you have to 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 make an anastomosis there and patch insert like the truncus as well as the. Um, um the, the the mesenteric superior artery plus the renal so this is this is big big uh, vascular surgery i don't do that i don't know dean have you done that no i haven't done that luckily what, uh, uh, of the case florian, did, florian did give you a little bit of a secret here if it is juxta renal or it involves the renal sometimes you can do a come across the aorta on a bevel kind of you know at an angle oblique as he said mm. and you can save the the one renal artery 
on the native uh, one renal artery on the native aorta so that you only have to reanast most the opposite renal artery. So otherwise, if you're anastomosing both renal arteries, your clamp time to your kidneys is longer and so on and so forth. So it, he gave you a little bit of a trick if the renals are involved. Did that make yeah. sense? Did I explain it well enough, Florian? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so, yeah. If, uh, did you understand it, Robin? Or, uh... Yeah, so suppose uh, did you... in this case, so, it's, yeah, so we, I think we clamp it like this. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So if, if it's, uh, I, I try to um, to upload the picture of this one case we did. We, I only have the the MR, but um, so no intraoperative pictures. But this is uh, just to, to to make clear to you what I mean. But basically, it's exactly what you just uh, showed and what Dean said. Um, I think if possible, you should try to sort of stay be uh, um, beneath the uh, yeah. the. Um, like the, the mesenteries or even the renals if possible, you know, because otherwise it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's much harder in, in, in every way um, for the surgeon. For, and the, I mean, I don't know how, how obese this person was. It uh, seemed no, no. pretty he was not slim, obese. He was yeah, not slim. Obese. So if you have an obese person, then this can be really, it can be terrible. So this looks very nice. Um, but if you have like five kilograms of, of gut, you know, always, um, um, have to fall into the uh, into the sides again, you know, and you have to have these these this huge hooks to just to push all that aside to get the view of the retro uh, um, um area. That is really sometimes that's a, that's a pain actually. So in that case, I think I would try to do everything to do it in an uh, endovascular, like uh, fenestrated or, or, or even branched um, 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 grafts. At a at a specific or at a center, who is who who deals with such cases very often because I can't do it. It's a, uh, it's too, too difficult. So luckily the infrarenal uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm is much common compared to other. Yeah. Yeah, it's ninety percent or something yeah. like that. I think it depends on the. It's, just, uh, it's the pressure for one. With, uh, and also, I think the structure of the wall is a little bit different from the yeah, from the do. structure of, of the aortic wall more proximal. So this is the reason and uh, why why um, the infrarenal uh, location is much uh, much more frequent than in the other parts of the aorta. Um, can you send uh, the picture to in uh, WhatsApp so that I can also. So the picture, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, wait a second. I will. Um, or you can share your screen. Yeah, I, I, know, I can't share it. I can, I can send it to you. But wait a second, Even, please. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Because I have to upload. I have to first get into the into the system first. So, so, so while um, you are uploading, uh, can uh, can Dr. Nobin and myself uh, quickly go through a few slides about the update on the research? Is it okay? Yeah, of course, of course. So, Dr. Uh, Nobin, I think uh, Sonia has informed you like there are, uh, there are eight slides about uh, the update on the research. So, can we can you quickly go through the slides? Is it okay? So the so Dr. Nobin, can you uh, explain about that? Uh, kindly unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm afraid I haven't seen this slide yet, but uh, maybe I can tell you what's happening. Uh, we have been able to collect around 50%, little more than 50%. Now it's 48 today. Uh, the numbers, the uh, the replies are trickling. Only uh, like those centers with nephrologists, they have replied really fast, and those that are run by others, we have not been able to contact them because uh, looks like uh, there is no uh, one we can contact in some of the centers. And some centers, the names are there, but there are no machines or there are no dialysis units also. 
and some government hospitals they are not even picking up the phone we're trying to reach them also still <clears throat> so around uh 54 50 to 53 percent we have completed and uh we'll be getting more uh replies this week okay so uh out of around 5,000, we have been able to collect uh, 3,206. Well, that's a big number. Uh, most of the big centers we have already collected, only one big center, two tiers, teaching hospital. We have not been able to actually contact them. It's in Kathmandu Valley, but, but uh, like, again, nobody's sure who is... Who is uh, who should reply? They are saying, okay, I, I should give, get uh, authority from another person. So they are not giving a fixed number. Otherwise, all the major centers, they have replied. Major centers, meaning uh, uh, Gautam Buddha outside uh, Kathmandu Valley, they have the highest number of patients. Then the National Kidney Center, Beer Hospital has replied. Bhaktapur, uh, another major centers, they have replied. Most of the medical colleges, they have replied. And, and only big center that has not replied is Tew Teaching Hospital. Before Sonia went, she tried to contact them many times, but um, we could not. Uh, maybe I should go there someday, some of these yeah. days. So and again, uh, also has a, like we can help us. Yeah, and um, yeah, we can get help from Dr. Uttam. And surprisingly, name of Kanti Hospital was also there. They have a uh, dialysis unit, but I contacted many doctors in Kan uh, Kanti Hospital. They don't have dialysis machine, so only the name is there. And all the garden hospitals, so we can we are not able to contact them outside Kathmandu Valley. So as we were expecting, most of the uh, uh, prevent uh, this access was at AV fistula, almost ninety percent. Uh, temporary catheters uh, was below ten percent. Permanent catheters even below five percent, and only few graphs. So, Dr. Dean, you might be uh, happy with the reports and results. Then, uh, who created them? Uh, temporary catheters, mostly anesthesiologists, permanent catheter, and otherwise, all the uh, accesses were by vascular surgeons. Temporary catheters were divided between anesthesiologists and nephrologists. Permanent catheters, AV fistulas, and AV grafts. Only, there were only a few AV grafts, and those are all made by vascular surgeons. And again, maintenance, uh, maintenance, most again pointed vascular surgeons and some pointed uh, nephrologists. So, uh, most of the vascular access they were dealt by vascular surgeons. Yeah, thank you. That's our uh, re report till now. Thank you, Dr. Navin. So, comments by Dr. Dean. Uh, well, I think. Uh, the main slide is that one, the prevalence of fistulas, temporary catheters, and perm catheters. I'm, uh, I, I think it's the one where the, the, the bar graft. But the, on that one, the, uh, it's amazing to me the number of fistulas and actually how few catheters there are. I, and I think that that's, uh, I think that's great. That's a great number. And if you compare it to the U.S. or Europe, a lot of places, we don't have 87% fistulas. We, we also have a lot more graphs, but we don't have that many fistulas. So we did this to find out what was being done in Nepal and what we could change. And my thought going into this was that there would be more catheters and we would try and decrease that number of temporary catheters. But it's already a pretty low number. It'd be nice if it could, if we somehow through, you know, over the next year or so, try and get that number lower by, oh, teaching and instructions and symposiums and things like that. But I don't know. My hunch is it's going to be hard to get that number lower. What do you think, Florian? Yeah, I'm not quite sure if this is, if there's, Again, not, not a certain bias with it. I mean, maybe only those who who create those fissures were willing to to report on that. And uh, because, uh, I mean, I think the last time we already talked about that, um, uh, we see very many with catheters. Um, of course, only again, those ones who have problems usually, that's right. But it's more than, 
than 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 we see here. This is my feeling. I mean, of course, I don't have the numbers or the figures. So, uh, but you're absolutely right. If you have 90% uh, fistulas, then I mean, then there's nothing else we can do because then it's done. If we ever reach 90% in Germany, I'd be really happy. Oh, sorry. In the new yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Rob. These uh, data are shared by the clinicians. So it, uh, from every center, they included all the patients. So I think, um, so... Uh, this 87% is from the data from the clinician. So I think they included all the patients they are dealing with. So I think the bias might be, might, might not be much. Yeah, Dr. Nogu. Well, okay, but, but then, but, but then I'm within, then there's not much we can actually do because I mean, then we are preaching to the converted, you know, that's, uh, so, no. but that, that, that would be, that would be sad. Then we had, then we don't have anything to do. <laughs> now what is oh, that? Yeah. I mean, because I didn't expect this. I, I truly did not expect this because, like you say, when we're there, we see these people with Robin with temporary catheters and all these problems. We go, oh my God, this is terrible. How many people are walking around with these catheters? And well, it ends up there there may not be that many. So the takeaway message is, is they're doing great and you can try and decrease the number a little bit, but they should, you know, the nephrologist should be applauded for what a great job they're doing. Well, and we, and we start it, it, running. And, the, the, and, and it's reportable. You could say, well, well, why report it? Well, you know, look, um, it's a, it's attainable possibly, you know, no, uh, how, I, I didn't. I did because I had to find that picture. I didn't uh, yeah. really pay attention. So, how many centers were involved? There are a total of eighty-six centers, and so far we have got replies from forty-eight centers. Forty-eight, including three thousand yeah, patients. Yeah, out of five thousand, we have uh, data from data of thirty-six hundred already. Yeah, of oh, five thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how many? How many? Um, how many dialysis patients do you think estimated do you have in in Nepal? Is there four, a... four, five thousand? Five thousand altogether. Yeah, oh, something okay. between forty five hundred and five thousand. Five thousand, okay. And thirty six, we have hundred, we have collected. Well, so I don't think it's... there's much bias. I mean, it's no, no. Well, if as it's I've like watched, that, as no. I've watched the data come in, it's one center after another after another with very low percentage of uh, catheters yeah so maybe so maybe the bias is on our side when we think there are too yeah. many catheters just because if they have problems they come yeah and otherwise yeah. they have fistulas Those well, have then, uh, okay well dean then we should start a running camp instead of doing IVF. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we should in invite all the nephrologists to come run with us what do you think instead of you know I mean, right, right. I mean, forget the symposium or <laughs> lectures. <laughs> That's right. They can tell us what to do. And then I'm trying to think. So then you think, well, how is it that they're doing so well? You know, how how is it? Well, one, uh, they're being referred. The other thing was when we visited that center with Dr. Nobbin, I mean, the vascular surgeon came right there to their own center. He was doing the fistulas right there in the old... You know, the patients already knew where to go. And it's like, oh, you're here today. Okay, go downstairs and get your fistula. I don't know if that's how it works, but. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. Like, um, yeah. whenever we meet patients who have like creatinine three or four, then we start talking about fistulas. Well, I mean, and you also, you have a big team of, of nurses and they seem to be very skilled and, and enthusiastic and very interested. So that that also accounts for good results because um, if you if you prick like the the fistulas in a, in a in a good manner, then you keep them alive over a long time. You know, if yes. you're not always prick at the same location, then you have this aneurysm and you have problems and all this and on. Well, as 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 we see as we see here very often. So yeah, well, well the only thing is the only thing you could improve on or maybe improve on is the fact that um, there's like three times more temporary catheters than 
than the tunneled catheters. Now, and that's because the, at least we've learned in the past, the temporary catheters cost a whole lot less, you know, like yeah. one third, one fourth the cost of the tunneled ones. Yeah. So if, if we could even get those temporary catheters down in the, the tunneled ones to be 8%, you know, switch the percentages would be nice. Hopefully oh, nice. then just because they have a tunneled catheter though, then they still, the hope would be is they still go ahead and get fistulas. It's just that the risk of sepsis is less and probably the risk of, oh, uh, thrombosis and stenosis probably is a little less with uh, the tunneled ones. I mean, what, what we do see is the problem of the central obliteration, like, like, like there's were so many cases and this is what you referred to, Dean, I'm, I'm quite sure. So yeah, if this could be reduced, that would be, would be uh, maybe a, uh, a goal that, that that should be reached in a way because we don't see as well but you said dean on the other hand you, you said you see very many uh, uh central problems in your country too well i haven't seen so many so far oh, um, i see a ton of it it's okay and, so just, and there again i mean it's it's sort of like when we're in nepal at doula kill i mean of course we're going to see the patients with the problems that's yeah, 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 yeah. my practice at the medical school if it's easy they're you know, they're going elsewhere. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We yeah. see it common, and you'll see it in patients with pacemaker wires, catheters, yeah. uh, you know, radiation, treatment yeah. for breast cancer, things like that. So, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, we do. We currently have a lady, and we don't know what to do with her, who has a standard stenosis, uh, who had a breast cancer, who had, uh, had a, uh, a port chamber. And so due to that, it's all obliterated. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, I mean, what's the what's the, the lesson to learn? Do it well, as the, do the it lesson as is as the lesson is for uh, us in the US and in Germany to be more like Nepal. Yeah. The lesson is for us, not for them. Yes. Other than other than the temporary catheters, the temporary catheters. Uh and and, and how do you change that? I, I'd be curious the cost. I mean, we, we keep hearing that the cost of those tunneled catheters are so high. And yet when I you and I have seen the kits for those tunneled catheters, you don't get just the catheter. You get it's, the wire. You get the tunneling thing. You get all this extra. Yeah, the sheath and the, all this sheath, stuff. You get yeah. all these things that you maybe don't necessarily need to have in the kit. You might get extra. And that might drive up the cost, or you just start saying, "Hey, we're we're finding a different vendor that can offer this cheaper." Yeah, but on the other hand, Dean, you don't want to have a cheap stuff that maybe has some breaking points, or I don't know what you know, um, uh, some which is not whether whether the the fabrics is not as good. I mean, you don't want to tempt that, right? No, I'll, I hear you, but I mean, uh, you know, there's. You could say make the same argument. There's cheap temporary catheters too. I mean, yeah, that's right. So, Doctor Dean and Doctor Friend, uh, we have less than a minute. So, is it okay if we rejoin in about ten minutes? Yes. Yes. Once we, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's okay. So, Zoom now doesn't allow us to immediately rejoin. Yeah, I know. We have to I know. Wait for eight minutes. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Robin, can you send us the the, sure. the 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 pictures like the the presentation you just um.